All right, so in terms of metals, it's pretty easy to identify what charge they're gonna have. If they're part of group one, they're always gonna have charge of plus one. If they're part of group two, they're gonna have a charge of plus two. And then aluminum is always gonna have a charge of plus three. But then the rest of the metals down here are what's called post-transition metals. So if we draw a little periodic table here, we've got this kind of staircase down here. And then we've kind of got this, this transition metal block here. So like aluminum is over here. And then this stuff down here is what's referred to as the post-transition metals. And so these post-transition metals have a little bit, are a little bit different in terms of what charge they want. So let's take a look at thallium, lead, and bismuth. And so think about how many valence electrons here. We have thallium, we have three. Lead, we have four. Bismuth, we have five, right? The P electrons and then the two S electrons. Remember that the D electrons do not count as valence electrons. So we have three valence electrons. We have lead is four valence electrons. And then bismuth is five valence electrons. And if you were to think about the electron configuration, it'd be something like NS2, NP1. I'm ignoring the D stuff. NS2, NP2, NS2, NP3. And so the charges that you'd kind of predict through losing all of the valence electrons would kind of be this plus three for thallium, plus four for lead, and plus five for bismuth. So if we take a look over here on our periodic table and we click this orbitals tab, you'll see there's little numbers underneath the elements. Those refer to their most common oxidation states. So if we take a look at thallium here, let me give my computer a second to stop glitching. Thallium, you can see, does have a common oxidation state of three as predicted. Same with lead, has a common oxidation state of four as predicted. Uh, bismuth actually, does, it's bismuth plus five. It's not that it's not possible, it is actually possible but it's just not very common. And you can see the lead and the thallium also have two other very common oxidation states of one for thallium and then plus two for lead. And so the rule with transition metals is that they often lose either all valence electrons, just like a regular group one or two metals, or, or just the P electrons. And so if you think about the number of P electrons, this one has, it only has one. And so thallium will also take a charge of plus one. So sometimes it'll be plus one, sometimes it'll be plus three. Uh, lead has two electrons. So its most common oxidation state are plus two and plus four. And then bismuth has three. So its most common one is plus three. Plus five is possible. It's just not that common. So just a little trick to kind of uh, know the most common charges of our post-transition metals. And then of course, the next kind of question is what about transition metals? Uh, so remember back in the beginning of the class, we said that transition metals have a positive charge, but it's very variable. Um, they can adopt a bunch of different charges. And so basically all we're gonna say is that transition metals do their own thing. Um, it's not that there's not rules or anything like that. There are. It's just beyond the scope of this class. You'll touch a bit on it in Chem 102, but it really requires mastery of inorganic chemistry. If you're curious and you want to do some Googling, check out the 18 electron rule um, and, and then read from there. Um, but you can also use, you know, this P table with this orbitals and you can see that they have a bunch of different um, oxidation states. Uh, not too many shown here. Um, yeah, I don't really like the oxidation states that are shown here. These metals can have more variety than just that. But like I said, we won't, I won't ask you about that. 